you sexy. Video number two today. I managed to <clears throat> play two turns in one game and one turn in this game, which is, of course, I'm going to say it again, is actually like two turns. So we finished out turn three here in Gadarian's Blitzkrieg. We played through 11 October. Okay. Supply. Always the bane of any operations on the East Front. Um, can, well, actually, the bane can be the bane of any operation at any time. So... This whole turn, like I say, and that's two turns per side, the Germans only conducted a couple attacks, and you know, the air, the air did its thing. And the Soviets actually threw in a couple, because they have, their supplies just, they got stuff everywhere, you know. And the Germans need to be able to probably actually take some of that stuff. So what I did was, you see the little notes I put on the board, I was calculating how many SP steps I needed, by a, by sort of by zone so I could reposition supply because here's the way it works when the when the game turn when a game turn starts in your over phase you have to supply the units before you receive new supplies so you have to kind of preload predetermine where stuff's going to be so I knew that if I used my supply all up to attack there wouldn't be nothing there to resupply these guys so I minim which yeah it makes sense because things would get delayed or paused or might or maybe they just drop the the one hundred percent amount of supply in one area to move it to another area because they want the push or the attack to be there you know the so those are some of the things which means you know you may have to you know like Patton having to pause on his chase across France all right so Monty could fly troops all over what the Dutch countryside or whatever whatever it was Holland whatever that stuff is. So, similar thing here. Only problem was I had to do it along the whole front. So, I pretty much just did a maneuver phase, for the most part, for the Germans to get them into position to attack. And I'm going to tell you, that stinks because they had, they had this big old gap here. Well, my thing's working tonight, hopefully. So, they had this big old pocket here. Now, there's, matter of fact, Soviet armor came down here and attacked. And uh, there's another piece somewhere in here. So the, the Russians, it's not much, but the Russians were able to get stuff over there, which will slow the Germans up. And then up in this area here, they didn't get much in here. But, I mean, I had a huge breakout going right here. And now the Soviets have managed to throw armor and some infantry up in here. Because I didn't have enough supply to push because of mismanagement or being too aggressive to push. So... Now this turn, what I did was I decided to low supply, to half supply, so to speak, all the units on the board so that I could build up one more time. And then, of course, the supply roll came around and the Germans rolled the second highest amount they could get, which is, I think, 72 is the highest through the first four turns. They rolled, they got 60. So I dropped 30 in Conatop, I dropped 30 in Smolensk, and when I do the movement phase, I'll start to shift. And then... We'll be able to conduct some attacks. They'll have to be. I'll have to be picky about what I do because everybody's on low supply for this turn. Uh, why did I choose low supply? Um, if you choose full supply, that means it's a full supply point. If you choose, if you choose low supply, you only spend half the cost to supply a unit that you would if you wanted full supply. Now it also affects their attack and movement, or so, or attack and barrage, or something like that. I have to look at the rules before I do that. I have to, this one of them rules where I got to check it every time before I start moving. So minimal, minimal aggressiveness probably on this turn, um, which could be a boo boo because I'm thinking I haven't looked at it yet. No, I'm not going to look at it. But I, th I think when I did the reinforcements last time, uh, I didn't look at it, but I could you just see it because it's the next step in reinforcements for the Russians. But it looks like they're getting massive amounts of stuff. So like, we'll find out. All right, we'll find out. But the Germans still have a just a huge, I mean, come on, they've got one, two, three, four, five, six. They've got six panzer divisions down here, about four motorized infantry units and a cab, and then the Das Reich. So, and they're, other than the fourth panzer, they're all in pretty good shape down here. So they, they do have a potent force. Uh, air, air power. Now the Russians are dwindling them down a little bit, but it's... Yeah. What's cool is, is you get your air, you get your fighters out there. Like you'll see, let me find one right here. Let's see, so this 3-1 right here. 
He is on, I flew him five hexes away from that base, okay? Why? Because the reaction zone is five hexes. So if the Russian bombers decided to fly in and hit this base, that fighter would get a chance to jump them and deal with them. So you find yourself doing sort of a cat and mouse type chess game with these fighters, trying to, you know, get a breach somewhere where you can send bombers to their airfields or to units, depending on how you've got your fighters out, and uh, try to destroy these airfields. And all these German airfields, they start at level two. All right, I've already burnt a supply point once on this guy to bring him back to a level two. This fighter flies in here and he took out some um, uh, 109s that were reduced. So it was he had a minus one die roll, but he managed to send that fighter back to the base here. And then the bombers came in and they hit that base. And I, to tell you the truth, there was quite a few more aircraft in there. And he got a few hits on those aircraft and reduced that airbase down one more notch. So it's a, I think it's a great game for having to deal with your aircraft and, and you know trying to cover cover your front keep your bases clear because i got news for you flak in this game an air base level one or two you got to roll an 11 or 12 in flak against air units coming in and so you can tell how that goes doesn't work of course then again i don't know how effective flak was anyhow but at least back in world war ii so anyhow, let's take a quick look up the line here i want to try to keep these a little lesser time so y'all can look through the whole thing all right so the russians are still dealing with the you know they i didn't pull any more troops down here they got a lot of artillery sitting down here they did try to attack right there and they drew a an optional well the attackers got to resolve his first so i backed them off and the germans didn't have to do nothing same result right here on that uh was it that panzer unit right there same thing they had a, a both had optionals didn't do any attacking in here just trying to keep the front a little you know Gaps don't really matter because you can blow right through them unless you're a truck. So, uh, nothing going on here. The Russians still hold Bryansk, and they probably will for a little bit longer. Um, still very, very thin here, but we did get some armor over here. Now, here's the key to armor. If you're attacking and the defender's in a clear hex, doesn't matter what type of unit he is, the attacking guy, if he is armor, he gets doubled. But defending armor doesn't get doubled in a clear hex. Just... I don't know, I guess maybe it's they're assuming you caught them flat-footed, okay? Sitting out in the open. Uh, in front of Viasma, the guys are still in their works there. Matter of fact, I should have spent some SPs to increase that. Nah. Yeah, we'll see. Maybe I will do that as the last part of that phase. Uh, Russian supplies just pour in. Moscow picked up, uh, I think, 20 more or 30 more. And uh, Varnish, Varnish picked up another 30. They got airfields all over the back back here. And I'm using them. Believe me, I'm using them, so... And uh, it cost me six supply points every time, though. So uh, now here it goes again. It's broken again. Son of a gun. There we go. All right. So, yeah, that's, that's it for uh, turn three, which is, you know, like I say, to me, it's like six turns. And we're going to see if we can't start the push again with the Germans and try to see if we can't plug holes with whatever Russians show up on this turn. Like I said, I don't know yet, but we're going to find out here in a minute. All right, let's get this thing up so y'all can see what's going on in the campaign for Moscow. Guderian's Blitzkrieg won from the gamers back in, I don't know, 19-something or other, 1992. All right, talk to y'all soon.